How are we doing folks? Well it's time once again to have another crack at this car and to try and uh, get the engine running again. So now I've got all the service items, let's give the engine a thorough service and get it back to rights. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so we're going to start by draining the oil out of it because uh, we can leave the oil draining while we're doing everything else on the engine. Now, um, number one is, make sure you're wearing gloves because uh, nasty old engine oil is not good stuff to get in your hands. Uh, it can be carcinogenic and it's got all sorts of other nasties in it, so don't get it on you. So we're going to undo these and we're going to uh, let the oil start draining. You can see it's already started dripping, which is why I have my drip tray underneath. Okay, so there's the oil pouring out there now all around the sump plate into my catch can. Okay, so the eagle eyed amongst you will have noticed that the, um, the distributor is actually being removed. Now, um, in order to do the points on these, I think it's easier just to remove the distributor rather than to try and do them in situ. The simple reason is, is because it's actually quite easy to remove the distributor in a beetle. What you do is, uh, you make sure that this nut here is uh, stays tight, okay, do not loosen that nut, okay, because otherwise you're going to upset your timing, and you will see at the um, the front of the car, essentially, for the engine, the uh, you have another nut, uh, coming, uh, a stud coming out of the um, crankcase with a nut on the top of it that holds this in place, okay. Looking at the distributor here, first of all, what we need to do is we need to um, take a rotor arm off, okay, so that just pops off like that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our points out, okay? So the points are held in by a um, screw down there. And then we can pop off our uh, little spade terminal here as well too. I'm going to take the condenser off as well because we have another condenser. So that's this screw on the side, okay? So we take that screw out, put that aside. And that allows us to remove all of this carry-on here too. So we put that, put that aside and we will go and get our new, um, our new points. Okay, so um, the next thing you need to do is now with the distributor, um, uh, with the, the points removed and the distributor disassembled like this, um, there is a little felt pad on the inside of the shaft here, okay? Now that felt pad needs to be impregnated with a little bit of oil, okay? Um, you, uh, you could use uh, engine oil in this instance and it's absolutely fine. So uh, fresh engine oil, obviously. I have a new condenser, new points, new rotor arm and new cap. Okay, so we're gonna fit all of them. So uh, let's start by uh, putting in our, uh, our condenser. Anyway, that's uh, that's done. So now we have that wire. That wire will go off to the coil. Okay, we have new fresh wires there, new fresh condenser. So next thing we do is we put our new points in. So our new points are the ones over here, and um, what happens here is they go in like this. Okay, so now you can see that the. Um, uh, the points are in. Uh, I've pushed uh, any wiring that would be in the way of the movement of the points I've, uh, I've pushed off to the side. So that's um, that's over there now and uh, this one comes around the top. So the points are the, the points are in need of adjustment now. Okay, so how we adjust the points is you put the feeler blade in between the two points in here, slacken off the screw all together in there that actually holds the points down. Now what will happen is the spring will act. Uh, the spring will act on the. Um, will allow the points to pull together towards the feeler blades. Okay, we're spot on there now, right? So that's a. Uh, that's our sixteen thou uh, points gap set, right? Uh, we'll just nip up the screw. Just make sure it's one hundred percent tight. And uh, that's a good job's a good one. So now you can see as you rotate the. Uh, rotate the shaft. You've got. Um, your points are uh, opening and closing nicely. So we're going to pop our, pop our new rotor arm now in. Um, you'll see there's a little uh, notch inside the rotor arm that goes into the notch in the shaft. Okay, so uh, you'll see I uh, blanked off um, where the distributor actually goes. So just pull it out gently, make sure you don't get any of the dirt in around it. And take off the uh, nut that you would have put back on there just for safekeeping. And um, then we will put our uh, distributor back in. So uh, what we'll do is we'll pop our distributor in, roughly getting it, getting the drive dog roughly lined up with where it's supposed to be. So remember I told you the vacuum can is around to your left. The dr the rotor arm should be around there, and it roughly goes in like so. There we go. So that's in now. And we know the timing should be within the ballpark. I know I'm going to. Ch I did say I'm going to check it, and I do mean that. Now what we can do is we can actually connect up our points to the uh, distributor. Um, 
So they, uh, the points actually connect to the negative side. So distributor is in, pop our nut back on on the back of it. And we can nip that up. So that's tight now, right? So that distributor is now in and home. So what we can do now is we can uh, change our spark plugs. So uh, changing a spark plug in a Beetle is an absolute pain in the face. And the simple reason is because of the fact that they're uh, located in an arseways angle. And the aluminium heads are prone to uh, having the threads stripped out of them. So I'm gonna show you a trick for that now. Okay, there's one spark plug looking very, very sorry for itself. Right, so that's, uh, that's the, four the four old plugs out. Now here's a nice new set of spark plugs and um, what we're going to do basically is we're going to use, the, this is the, uh, the off cut of the end of the old um, HT lead and we're going to actually click that on and we're going to be able to use that to thread the spark plug into the head by hand, okay? Because that way then you'll feel if the, um, if the threads are picking up in, uh, at all on it. What we need to do next is we need to gap the spark plugs, okay? Because the electrode gap is important and um, needs to be set. So it gets set from 25 to 28, uh, point, uh, 25 to 28 tau, or uh, in um, uh, if you're if you're using the metric system, 0.6 to 0.7 millimeters. Okay, so I have a uh, 26 tau feeler blades here, uh, 20 tau and a 6 tau, and um, that uh, that spark plug gap is fine now. Okay, so um, now we can start putting the, the new spark plugs in. Now remember I told you about putting the, uh, putting the uh, spark plug um, HT lead end on? That just allows me to just easily thread the spark plug in. I can feel it's going in there now. Okay, so there's the four spark plugs in. We just need to tighten them up now. Okay, so let's get the, uh, let's get the HT leads replaced now. So you'll see that the, um, the old HT leads are a bit you know, a bit of a mismatch. But conveniently, number one is actually the yellow one. And that was, uh, so that was, that's gonna make life easy for us anyway. So the way it works basically is, you go clockwise around from number one. So it's one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one, four, three, two, one. Just remember it is, is it basically four, three, two, one. But uh, the firing order is generally written on the generator pedestal on a Beetle anyway. So um, what we'll do is, before we put the distributor cap on, we'll actually put the, um, we will put the new HT leads in, uh, plug them onto the spark plugs. So cylinder one is the front on the right. So I have one of the HT leads routed correctly and you'll see the way it goes is basically in behind the uh, intake manifold under the um, generator and over to the, uh, uh, to the distributor. So that's number one. Right, so number two is basically the same situation. Um, so remember our firing order, so there'll be one, four, three, two. So two is actually on that one there. So that's that, right? So now, I'm gonna actually clip that on now. I'm gonna get our other two leads on. Okay, those of you who were paying attention down the back will remember that there is um, a plate on the bottom of the engine and, they, uh, and I removed four of the six nuts. So now it's a case of replace, removing the other two, okay? So, some plate is now free to come off. And there's one of the gaskets, I have new gaskets. Okay, so here's the, uh, here's the, the strainer plate and here's the strainer itself, okay? Now, um, it got a little bit warped when I took it out, but we can straighten that out anyway, it's, it's not a problem. Um, it's, it's only a very light metal, so um, take the other gasket off. The other side is a gasket that goes on both sides of it. Okay, so here's the uh, oil strainer, as uh, clean as I could kind of get it in the uh, circumstances. And there's new uh, crush washers to go underneath the heads of the uh, nuts. And um, these lads here don't get used because they are, um, they'd be for if you had a, a plug in the center of the um, uh, strainer plate, which we don't. And we also have two of these as well too. So what I like to do is, I like to actually give these a little smear of oil before I put them on. And that's enough just to help them seal. You don't need to go putting sealant on these, okay? It doesn't call up for them. VW didn't do it, so we're not gonna do it. Okay, so there's the strainer plate in there with the gasket in behind it, okay? So uh, the next thing we need to do is we need to get our, um, uh, well, sorry, that's the strainer in. We need to put the strainer plate on now. So what we do is we put the, uh, these are actually soaked with a little bit of oil, okay? So we just pop the, um, pop that in place. Okay, uh, as I said, you don't need to go too mad putting oil on it. Just a little smear is all it needs to, ha it needs to have. Um, so we'll put that on now and we put our strainer plate in place. Hel hold it on just with two nuts while we get ourselves sorted out and then we can get everything else in place. 
Okay, so, now one of the things that always happens with these bloody things is people stitch them in, okay? You do not need to stitch them, okay? Literally just a nip is all you want to go, okay? So... Now, that to me is tight enough, okay? So I'm going to just go around them just one more time, just give them the same amount of pressure again, make sure I got them all, and then we're going to put three and a half litres of 20W50 mineral oil into this engine, okay? I'll put this first litre in, and we'll have a look underneath and make sure it's not spilling out all over the ground. Okay, so uh, that's the um, that's the oil added. It it actually did take three and a half liters in the end. I was right, so uh, I shouldn't have doubted myself. Bang on the mark, bang on the full mark there now. So um, the eagle eye, amongst you may have noticed that we don't have an alternator belt, belt fitted. So let's rectify that situation now. I have a new alternator belt for it. Okay, so the way the tensioning basically works on this. Um, this pulley is, you can't move the alternator, okay, because it's got the fan on the back of it, which is in the fan shroud, and that has to stay the way it is. So what we have instead is we have a, a split pulley, and we have shims to go between it. And depending on how many shims you use in between it, it makes the belt ride higher or lower, because it's basically it's a V-groove, and if you space the two further apart, the belt will sit, sit lower in the groove, okay? And if you put the, if, if you use less shims, so less shims actually means you have a tighter belt. Um, so um, what we'll do is we'll actually try the number of shims there that uh, uh, that, that were in the uh, were in the car when we used the old belt. I don't I don't think for a minute that that would be the right number, but it's a good starting point. And the, the spare shims are kept basically underneath this little um, this little lad here. So these shims aren't actually doing anything; they're basically spare. And uh, the ones that are in between the two halves of the pulley, they're the ones that are doing something. a little tight but I think that'll be okay. So uh, I'll use an impact gun to tighten it now. One of the other things I suggest you do as part of the service is actually uh, give the battery a charge because um, normal use on a battery um, isn't really enough to get it up to a full charge so while you're doing all your oil changing and all that as well too stick it on uh, put it on a charger and um, so we need to do we need to adjust the tappets um, and adjusting the tappets is basically there there's two uh, two rocker covers one on either side and uh, you just have cylinder one and two on one side and three and four on the other side and um, so what we need to do is we need to uh, get to uh, number one cylinder top dead center first of all and then adjust that valve uh, the two valves on that cylinder and then just continue on that way Okay, so the first thing you need to do is to take your uh, distributor cap off and rotate the engine so it's at number one cylinder top dead center. Okay, so that delight up there is your um, your uh, rocker cover. Okay, as I said, there is two. So uh, they always leak, uh, the rocker cover seals. Um, so we have two new seals for it as well too. And they will go on to leak as well too, as a standard operating procedure for Beatles. Um, but uh, at least we tried. God damn it, at least we did that. So... <laughs> Um, anyway, what you do is you literally um, get a screwdriver and wang this off, okay, that's what it says in the book, you wang that off, alright, and you push it down there and then the rocker cover comes off, revealing, surprisingly enough, your rockers. Okay, so obviously we're working in the wheel arch here. Basically, it's a pain in the face. Um, what you need is, in order to do this job, is a um, six tau feeler blade, a 13 mil spanner, and a flathead screwdriver. Now that is way too loose there, for example, right? And that is too tight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna crack off the two adjusters. The stubby screwdriver should do the job nicely. Now, normally you wouldn't have a camera doing this, a uh, camera in front of you doing this, so I'm kind of at a bit of an awkward angle, which is why I'm making this look a bit awkward, but the things I do for you wonderful YouTube folks. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the screwdriver back on here, and I'm going to just nip that up, okay, and we'll see how we're... Yeah, you see that's tightened up now, right, so I'm not happy with that, so I need to just back it off. Now, I'm not talking about a tiny little bit. It's just literally probably about that much is all we're talking. Yeah, see there's that's perfect, right? They're both bang on. Okay, so happy days. That's number one, uh, number one and two done, right? So now what we need to do is we need to replace our rocket cover gasket and do number three and four. And to be honest with you guys, you can figure it out. 
<laughs> just basically rotate the engine three, uh, rotate the engine backwards till you get to number three, and then number four. Number three is the front of the car. Number four is the back of the car. So here's your rocker cover gasket. It's one of those annoying cork ones, okay? And here's our rocker cover with the old one in, which is actually broken. Um, so it's just as well we have a replacement one. Um, would certainly account for a lot of the oil leakage off this engine. Maybe the push rod tubes aren't leaking at all. Um, so what we'll do is we'll wipe, wipe up around here um, on the uh, sealing surface. And uh, these, uh, these uh, seals, uh, like the, um, the, the strainer uh, gaskets on the sump plate, should be soaked in oil as well too. Now these need a good bit of oil on them, okay, because otherwise they will not seal. And to be honest with you, they'll never bloody seal anyway, they're a pain in the face. Um, I don't rate them particularly highly, but uh, VW used them for years, so we'll go with VW uh, on this, on their superior knowledge of all things air-cooled VW. <laughs> okay, so that's on. That's one side done, and now we do the other side. Uh, so this is the servicing section. The tune-up section will be the next video. So we, we'll, we'll get this engine running then, give it a tune-up and make sure it's running right. And um, it, But we've, we've, got, we've got the back broken there now anyway. And then what we also need to do is do those fuel lines as well too. So a, few, a box of bits still, still to be fitted. All from VW Spares, new air filter, uh, air filter housing, there's handbrake cables, new fuel pipe, there's your fresh air tubes. Hopefully by the time I'm doing the next video, um, I will have the uh, piece of rear tin that has to go down here as well too. So you can put that in place and um, basically go over the engine and make sure it's actually running right. Um, then once we have that done, we'll have a look at the brakes and we'll see how we're looking there. So um, yeah, look at uh, thanks for watching folks. Don't forget to like and subscribe and um, I'll see you in a future video. Thanks for watching. Okay, okay, I popped the battery in. Let's just see if we can crank it over at least. Okay, good battery. Round two, let's see what happens. Well, it's cranking anyway, so at least that's something. Okay, a little splash down there. Now let's see what happens. Okay! Anyway, look, let's leave it there, folks. I'll talk to you soon, okay? Thanks for watching.